This is part 8 of my Python programming tutorial series for the Blender game engine. And in the previous lesson we used the apply movement command to move the icosphere. Now let's just take a look at this. So you'll see if you apply a force with the right arrow key to the cube, you notice it moves it along. But that force is cumulative. If I was to continually press that key, you'll see that force just keeps cranking up. All right. And it'll eventually, you know, die back down because of resistance and then uh, basically friction is is its enemy all right so but it'll die by die back down all right but in this lesson we're going to do something else altogether we're just going to come up here and in here now instead of up here we imported the blender game engine well we're going to import something else we're going to import the rasterizer and a rasterizer if uh, let me see, a rasterizer is kind of like your graphic surface like if you have a 2d plane it's kind of like your paint surface where you can access things in x and y dimensions if you were painting a program that's you know we those are frame buffers were in the old days and uh, so they just call it the rasterizer in here and then down in here i'm also going to get the mouse and i have these two commands right here i've just commented them out for the moment so now what we have we're just up in here we used here's how we got a keyboard the keyboard I set is equal to this code called BlenderGameEngine.Logic.Keyboard. This is kind of an alias. Basically, I've just turned this code here into this code called keyboard, into this command called keyboard. That way, it's just easier to reference like that. And then I'm doing the same thing for the mouse. To access the mouse, it's actually BGE.Logic.Mouse. And the reason is that is because that's why we had to bring in Blender Game Engine here, because that's the command for the mouse. But I'm using the word mouse instead. And then I'm using a rasterizer command called show mouse. So what this does, it shows me the mouse as the scene is run. Because up until then, maybe you haven't seen the mouse. If you look at the other lessons, you'll notice the mouse wasn't there. So well, it's here when I run it. But let's actually, let's go back. I'll show you. If I take it out like that and then run the code, there is no mouse in the scene. Notice that? Okay, so the, but if I go back in here and I take this, this now I show the mouse is using true, run it, run it. Now there's my mouse in the scene. Now, having mouse movements is absolutely critical because you might want to come into the scene somewhere and click somewhere. And I do that in a lot of my uh, game applications. If you've seen them, the tank and whatever, sometimes I might place an object just by clicking the mouse at a location and then maybe I'll press a keyboard event and then something will I'll add an object to where I'd clicked my mouse. Or maybe I'll just be moving the mouse across the scene and maybe just swiping the mouse across a position where an object is located, something else happens. So you gotta know where your mouse is located. Alright, so that's the show mouse routine. So where are these, what's the data associated with it? Well down here in main, I'm gonna come down here and I'll just say uh, uh, yeah, show the mouse positions, show positions, and I copied code over from, let's see, where is it, back into here, so now, basically, I put a print statement in here, so this says, and here's how you access it, mouse position, go full screen, so I'm, this is what's going to show up on the console, I say the x value in double quotes and here's the y value in double quotes and then I have the mouse position so mouse dot position zero and this is an array index so zero is usually and so this is by default is like oh, okay that must be x and sure enough it's x so and this must be y so mouse position one is the y value and mouse position x is the x value I mean mouse position zero is the x value so as it's going through here, it should just constantly print that to uh, the console. So we're going to run that. I'm going to bring the console into view at the same time if I can. Let's see. We'll go into the code. Let's go in here. Let's see if I press P. I'm going to go and I'm moving the mouse. Let me go get the console window. There's the console window in here. And let's see by moving it around, I click. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do it. So I'll do it like this. It's going to stay, let's see, what is that? It, 0.414 and 0.895, right? So let me go back, get that. And you'll notice it's there changed to 0 and 
zero. I can't believe I hit that exactly at zero. Let's see another one. And there is 0 0.042. So basically it's telling me the mouse positions in the console down there. And so in uh, and that's really useful to know. Let's see if I can get yeah, I'm if you look at it, well, if you type in the code and have your console window open on the side, you'll see the it's printing in real time all those positions. All right. So I'll stop that for a moment. So then in uh, the next lesson, what we'll do is we'll come along and we'll pick up maybe the mouse positions or something else within the code because we already have them right there. There's mouse position zero, mouse position one that tells you your x and y value. So already you can do something with that yourself. You might even try that for yourself. So based on that information, maybe you come down here and if the mouse position does a certain thing, well, well, let's do that. Let's just do that. Let's put another if statement in here. While we're here, let's just, let's, 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 we'll just do this. It's if, we'll just type if mouse position zero. Right there is mouse. <laughs> yeah, I already knew what that was. Real. Mouse position zero is, so that's in the X that's x, so x is going this way, is greater than, I don't know, 50.0, then move the icosphere. It's a tab, one tab worth. Okay, let's save that. So before I run the code, I'm just going to move my mouse over here to the right. And I'm going to press P, I'm going to press P, and now before I do anything, just by, uh oh, invalid syntax. Invalid syntax, what did I do? Oh, yeah, easy enough. Forgot my colon at the end of my if statement. Okay, now let's go do it again. I'll press P. And now by moving my mouse over here, when it gets past 50, if it's in the scene, where is 50? X, my icosphere let's see if it is it is x and y point oh okay that's right i forgot so these are going to scale to uh between your screen in those coordinates are going to scale between zero and one all right so uh is greater than 0.5 so 0.5 would be halfway across the screen like that i'll save that okay and then i'll move my mouse here and then i'll press p now when I move my mouse halfway across the screen, it should move that icosphere. X. Now, I don't see it doing it. Oh, but that's because it's within my... Mm -hmm. And there's another problem there, because it's within my object position code like that. So let's... That's only executing if the cube object has moved. So let's do this. Okay, no, those are back on the same area. So it doesn't care if the cube object is moved or not. So now I start here and move it. So now when I move my mouse over here, there it goes. All right, I've applied the movement like that. Oh, right, you want to see that again? Okay, let me go we'll apply the movement. So it's constantly doing it. In fact, if I just move there just for a second, you can see it stops. If I go just for a second, it stops. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.